Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and this is Rytron Part 4. It's the final countdown! The final countdown? He did not just say that. Can we copy Strike Ninjaneer? You guys have asked for it, I have promised it, and so here we are. The last and final installment of the Rytron Sega where we finish and test Rytron. It's gonna be amazing. If you have not already seen the previous three parts, you disgust me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Links for those parts will be in the description down below along with any components I'm using in today's video. But enough talk, with all that out of the way and without any further ado, let's get started. Oh my. Okay, let's stop that. So here is Rytron after parts 1, 2, and 3. Now Rytron is actually extremely close to being finished. We basically just have to put in the guts, which is very exciting. There are of course a few things we're going to have to add to the body, but not very many, and we'll get on those in a minute. But for now, let's remove the side panels and flip in the motors like we did in part 1. Wonderful. Now, if you remember in part one, we just take our six volt 1000 RPM motors and drop them into the motor mounts. And then slip this bracket over them and secure it in place in both sides with a screw so that the motor won't back back out. Perfect. Now we'll just repeat that three more times. My poor leopard gecko Caesar lives right next door to where we're filming and he looks so stinking annoyed right now. I'm sorry Caesar. I'm so sorry Caesar. I'm just trying to finish filming right trying real quick and I'll leave you alone. Can I pet you? Is that okay? Or are you jump and run? Nope, you don't like that. Okay, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll leave you alone now. So with all the motors in, we are now ready for the wheels. For wheels, I have these inch and a half wheels I got online somewhere. Don't remember where, link in the description below. They're plastic in the middle, and as you can see, yes, that is a three millimeter D-shaft connector port, which is exactly what my motors are. And then it has a pretty grippy rubber tire around it. So I'm going to go ahead and slip these onto the motors, and something I really like about them is how snugly they fit. And that actually looks pretty stinking cool. With that, we can now go ahead and drop the sides back on. Now, go. now before we move on, let's talk about the grabbing arm real quick. I've been using this 9kg high-tech servo to power the arm and it seems to be working pretty well. However, it's like a $30 servo. Well, I was on Amazon a while ago and I found this 20 kg servo for $16. So it's half the price of the high-tech one and supposed to be twice as strong. That seems like a pretty good deal to me. Now granted, this is not quite as high of a quality as the high-tech one is, but since I'm gonna use this in a battle bot and could get broken in the first fight, I'm not that worried about it. So let's go ahead and drop this servo into the arm. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and crack this thing open and get started on the electronics. Now the fun begins. I'm going to start by soldering each set of wheels together, positive to positive, negative to negative. Now we can go ahead and solder our ESCs to those. I know this is a complete mess, but I had to do a lot of testing to make sure everything was properly wired, and we seem to be good to go. So I went ahead and plugged everything into the receiver, so now we can go ahead, pack it in, and close it up. I realized that taking off the whole cover every time we need to access the battery was super annoying, so I went ahead and cut into two pieces. We have our main piece that their servo will attach to, and then we have this little tiny door that will access the battery through. So like I said, we can go ahead and bolt these on now, and of course making sure to plug in our servo into the receiver while we do it. Now for a battery to power this beast, I'm going to be using a 7.4 volt 300 milliamp hour LiPo I picked up. So far I love it, however I have not done a whole lot of testing with it just yet, so we'll see what happens. Now I am going to add a thin sharpened piece of steel to the front of this wedge, maybe on a hinge system so it'll stay as low to the ground as possible to try to help me get up underneath the opponent. 
but for the time being, since I don't want to scratch up the floor and I'm not going to be testing this in the flattest place ever, I'm going to use this little cardboard piece I cut out. Although it isn't very tough, it should still be able to help me get underneath things. I'm not sure how straight I put this on. In fact, I'm not real sure how straight I cut it out, but it'll work for our test. So with that, all that's left to do is to attach the servo to the body. And then I'm going to go ahead and drop a short little wood screw into the back of the grabber's head to help guarantee it can self-right. There we go, that looks pretty good, but let's see if it can balance on that. Perfect, and with that we are now finally ready to test it. So now I'm going to go ahead and have Rytron fight Batman. I really don't want to see Batman destroy Rytron, but I guess it'll be good to see where Rytron breaks at. So let's see what happens. I'm extremely happy with how this little stinker performed. As you saw, he self-writes beautifully and he's very quick, which is amazing. There's still a few things I need to work on, like making sure this cable stays out of the way and maybe putting a nail in front of the wheels to stop the robots from, you know, running into my wheels and affecting my traction. And of course, I need to replace this cardboard piece with a real wedge, but we already talked about that. But past that, the main thing I really need to do is just learn how to drive him well. I'm very happy with how he performs, and it's actually pretty fun to watch himself right. And so there you guys have it, part four of Rytron. The next time you see Rytron, he'll probably be in a fight somewhere. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video, and if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to subscribe. Oh crap, I just drove this thing off the desk.
That's like a three and a half foot drop. But he's okay. 